Hi everyone, welcome to EduTap and welcome to this video. In this video, we are going to discuss another important topic under ARD Simplified series and the topic that we are going to discuss today is dryland agriculture, right? Very important topic for your exam point of view because we have seen previously there were questions asked from this topic, right? And there was one descriptive questions as well from this particular topic in your phase 2. So, it's very, very important that we cover this topic in a detailed manner. So, today I am going to do that. And before I tell you uh, what is dry land agriculture, let us see what were the questions that was asked, right? So, if we talk about NABAT phase 1 2023, there was one uh, objective question asked in your phase 1, which type of agriculture receives the rainfall between 750 to 1150 mm? This was the question, right? Now, if you can solve this question right now, well and good. Otherwise, at the end, we are we will be able to answer this question because we are going to cover this thing, right, in this lecture. Now, if I talk about the descriptive question, so the descriptive question that was asked from this particular topic was, write a short note on dry land farming. So, you will only be able to write a short note when you know about dryland farming, right? So, let us discuss about what is this dryland farming or dryland agriculture, right? So, basically agenda of this particular lecture is to understand what is dryland agriculture, what are the categories of dryland agriculture, what are the problems associated with it and what are the improved dryland agriculture techni technologies. So, these, this is all what we are going to discuss in this video. So, let us first start by understanding what is dryland agriculture. So, students, we know plant need sunlight, plant need uh, different atmospheric gases, plant need water for proper growth and development, right? In order to make food for carrying out different processes, plant need all kind of things. So, water is one of the very important and crucial input for plant, right? So, it is very important that there is sufficient amount of water in the field in order to, in order to you know, support the growth and development of plant. So, water is important, right? Now, how this water is provided to field or a crop field, I would say, is either through, is either through irrigation or by rainfall, right? So, plant receive or the crops receive water either through irrigation or by rainfall. So, irrigation will be possible in those areas where we have irrigation facilities or we have water resources that can be exploited for irrigation purpose, right? So, such areas where all the irrigation facilities are available are called irrigated areas. Okay, they are called irrigated areas. On the other hand, the areas where they where we do not have irrigation facilities, rather our agriculture is totally dependent on rainfall, such areas are called rain-fed areas. Okay, they are called rain-fed areas. Clear? Now, I hope you, you understand that areas where we have irrigation facilities are called irrigated areas and the areas where we do not have irrigation facilities rather our agriculture is totally dependent on rainfall they are called rain fed areas clear now students your rain fed areas are also called as dry land areas or dry land uh, you know uh, the type of agriculture that is done in this rain fed areas is called as dry land agriculture right so basically uh, the rain fed areas or the areas that are totally dependent on rain are also called as dry land areas, clear? And the type of agriculture done in these areas are called as dry land agriculture. So, what do we understand by dry land agriculture? So, it is basically cultivation of crop entirely under natural rainfall without irrigation. So, students, let me tell you in India, more than 50% of area is under dry land agriculture. Okay, only around I think 48% is around irrigated, rest 52 is under dry land agriculture. So, you we can see that a huge amount of area is under this uh, dry land agriculture or we can say is a rain fed area totally dependent on rain, right? Now, students, I hope it's clear what is dry land agriculture. 
it's basically the agriculture or the cultivation of crop under only the entirely under the rainfall condition or without irrigation facilities clear now students let us let us talk about the categories of dryland agriculture so basically we have three categories here based on the amount of rainfall received okay so what amount of rainfall is received by any particular area we have three based on that we have three types of categories or three types of dryland agriculture we can say so first we have is dry farming then we have dryland farming and then we have rain fed farming okay now don't get confused here again in the category also there is a category of rain fed farming right rain fed agriculture dryland agriculture is same rain fed uh, you know you know there is one thing which is dryland agriculture rain fed agriculture under which which we have three categories and one of the category itself is rain fed farming clear now students this is classified as i have told you based on the amount of rainfall received now dry farming is when the area receive annual rainfall which is less than 750 mm per annum okay if a particular area receives less than 750 mm rainfall per annum then that will be called as dry farming then we have dryland farming here the amount of air rainfall received by such areas is between 750 to 1150 mm per annum clear and under rain fed we have the rainfall where uh, you know the rainfall amount of rain is more than 1150 mm per annum right now students uh, under your dry farming regions like uh, parts of rajasthan where very scarce rain or less rain is there such will come right now there is some area which is receiving more than 1150 mm rainfall and they are under rain fed agriculture rain fed farming why so because again irrigation facilities are not not there but still rainfall is enough to support crop growth and development areas such like north eastern areas right in north eastern india we have enough rainfall but again irrigation facilities are not developed there that's why it is also under your dryland agriculture clear so i hope it's clear that what is dryland agriculture what are different categories now let us discuss them in detail so students i have already told to, talked about the amount of rainfall received by these it is less than 750 by dry farming 750 to 1150 by dryland farming more than 1150 by rain fed farming right in rain rain fed farming now if i talk about moisture availability see the area which is receiving less rainfall will have shortage of moisture acute shortage of moisture right now dry farming again limited moisture is there so there will be a shortage of moisture but in rain fed farming there will be enough moisture because there is enough rainfall that is occurring in these areas clear now talking about growing uh, crop growing season now if we have limited moisture in the soil we cannot grow long duration crop so we have to take rather short duration crops so that the moisture that is available in the soil is enough to support that short duration crop clear so here the grow, crop growing season for dry farming is less than 75 days uh, 75 to 120 days in dryland farming and more than 120 days in your rain fed farming clear so now again your crop growing season depend on the moisture content if any area has less moisture moisture content crop season or the crop that we will take there will be of short duration type we cannot take long duration crop because there will be not enough moisture to support your long duration crops clear now growing region for dry farming is arid dryland is semi arid and rain fed is humid okay so such kind of regions come under your dry dryland and rain fed farming now cropping system talking about cropping system so in dry farming either you can take only one crop or you can take two crops at a time right and that two of short duration in your dryland farming single crop or intercropping as is taken in your rain fed farming you can take intercropping as well as multiple cropping right because there we do not have limitation of moisture so multiple cropping can be done there now if i talk about dry spell so dry spells are most common and frequent in your dry farmings again farming because less rainfall is there then there it is less frequent in dryland farming it is there in dry land farming but it is less frequent uh, less as compared to the dry farming areas then there is no occurrence of uh, dry spells in your rain fed farming 
Talking about crop, crop failure, so crop failure again it will be more frequent in your dry farming due to limitation of moisture. It will it is less frequent in dry land and it is rarely seen in rain fed farming. Talking about constraints, what are the constraint constraints of these regions? So in case of dry farming, we do not have enough water. So only wind erosion will be a constraint. The soil will be carried away only by wind causing so wind erosion will be uh, or the rate of wind erosion will be very high in the dry farming talking about dryland farming so here wind and water erosion both can happen and if i talk about rain fed farming so more majorly majorly here water erosion will have or majorly here water erosion will take place because again there is a lot of moisture here right so what are the measures required so moisture conservation practices required in dry farming because we have limitation of moisture so whatever practice that can conserve moisture is required so again here moisture conservation practices as well as drainage for verti soils basically here also we need to conserve moisture but in few soils like your verti soils which are black soils sometimes drainage facilities is also required because these soils hold a lot of moisture they are full of clay and the clay do you know hold a lot of moisture and it can cause damage to our root crops right crop roots so drainage facilities may, might require some in some areas right and in case of rain fed farming we need a proper drainage facilities as we have enough moisture right so we do not want um, that our a crop root get impacted due to excess of moisture clear chalo with that let's move ahead to the problems of dryland agriculture now what are the problems associated with such kind of agriculture so students the very first problem is of inadequate and uneven distribution of rainfall so what happens in such area there is either inadequate means the rainfall is not enough or it is unevenly distributed what i mean by saying that like for say this is a reason this is a dryland reason so what can happen this particular area receive more rainfall this particular area receive less rainfall right so what will happen this is a uneven distribution of rainfall again not desirable we need even rainfall over entire area right so this is the very first problem associated with your dryland agriculture next is late onset and early cessation of rain so here what can happen rain can either come late or they can early withdraw okay rain can early withdraw there can be early withdrawal of rains so this is again a, a, a another problem now what happen if the rainfall is late what will happen we have sown uh, our seed at a particular time right kharif ki sowing kya hoti hai जून जुलाई में होती है सो फॉर से अगर रेनफॉल आपकी जून जुलाई में नहीं होती है इट इट एक्सटेंड और ये लेट ऑनसेट होता है रेनफॉल का वट विल हैपन जर्मिनेशन विल बी इम्पैक्टेड राइट और इफ अर्ली यू नो आपकी जो रेन्स है वो स्टॉप uh, हो जाती है अगेन देर विल बी अगेन नॉट इनफ मॉइस्चर फॉर द लेटर डेवलपमेंटल स्टेज ऑफ क्रॉप सो दैट विल ऑल्सो क्रिएट अ प्रॉब्लम राइट so that's again a problem of dryland agriculture next is prolonged dry spell during the crop period so sometimes there can be prolonged dry spells during crop growing period and what can happen with that so if there will be dry spell there will be no moisture for crop proper growth and development of crop and there are some critical stages where crop need water and if it does not have uh, if the soil does not have enough water crop will fail right there can be crop failure now that's again a problem next is low moisture retention capacity now students in such areas where the moisture content is less we usually see in desert area there will be less vegetation okay there will be less organic matter hence that soil there will be of you know poor quality it's not a good quality soil for uh, for growing crop so poor quality soil if there is a poor quality soil what will happen that soil will not be able to hold moisture if the soil will have less capacity to hold moisture again whatever moisture that is coming to the soil will not be properly you know distributed to the crop right so soil is also a problem because in such areas the climatic conditions are such a way that so in such a way that soil are not of good quality soil soil do not have enough moisture retention capacity right which again uh, is a problem of these areas now now we have next low fertility of soil now this is a related uh, point from the above one that if the soil do not have if the soils are not 
if the soils are not of good quality what will happen they will not have good ability to hold nutrient right if they are not able to hold nutrient again not enough nutrient is uh, provided to the crops right for their growth so again soil fertility is low in such areas and also students small size of land holding farmers have small size of land holding in such areas which again creates a problem right so these are some problems of dryland agriculture now next if i talk about the uh, improved dryland techniques what are the improved dryland techniques so first is crop planning so what can be done crop varieties of dryland area should be of short duration drought resistant and high yielding so what we can do we can do a crop planning or the scientist must grow such variety or uh, you know uh, make such varieties having short duration means they are of not much duration they are not taking much time to grow then they are drought resistance they should withstand the drought condition as well as they should be high yielding okay apart from this they should produce some kind of uh, some amount of yield they should be high yielding so that farmer can get enough return from the land right so crop planning can be done then planning of weather which means that we have to see the meteorological observation or we have to see what kind of weather condition will pre prevail for that particular time of uh, period of time and accordingly we have to plan our crops right so for say if there will be enough moisture we can go for uh, crops which uh, which are which can be grown in good moisture condition if there is less moisture so we can go for crops like which do not require much moisture like your uh, millets and so right so based on whether we can plan our uh, cropping system then we have crop substitution so basically we can replace the crop with more efficient varieties so the traditional varieties can be replaced by efficient varieties or high yielding varieties again right then other technologies include watershed management rate water harvesting and alternate land use so what we can do we can uh, you do watershed management we can develop an area catchment area where all the water which is being drained from different region can be collected and can be used for irrigation purpose then we can do rain water harvesting in which what farmers do they collect the rain water store it in a tank and then use it for the irrigation purpose right then alternate land use can be done means if any area do not support uh, you know your uh, field crops if because field crops do require a lot of water so that land can be converted for other purposes like it can be used for growing fodder it can be used for growing other horticulture or medicinal or aromatic crops right that can be grown well in such area so we can use the land alternatively so that is the meaning of alternate land use clear now i hope with this this is clear to you what is dryland agriculture categories of it then what are the problem associated with it and what are the improved technologies which can be implemented or which can be done in dryland agriculture clear so with this i hope this topic is clear now let's solve the question that i have asked you and that was asked to you in your 2023 examination which type of agriculture receives the rainfall between 750 to 1150 mm so answer here will be it will be option c not c sorry it will be dryland agriculture option d right so we know dry agriculture right it received dry agriculture dry farming received rainfall less than 750 mm now you have to learn this range because it is very important for your exam dryland received from 750 to 1150 mm right and your rain fed receive more than 1150 mm rainfall clear so this was the question and now i hope you were able to answer this question so uh, that's all for this uh, video i hope you have enjoyed the session now students one more thing there was one descriptive question asked from here here which it says write a short note on dryland farming or dryland agriculture now with whatever we have discussed so far i hope now you will be able to write a short note on this particular topic right so that's all i hope you have enjoyed thank you for watching thank you so much